So, Matt, you've, you've been health secretary, culture secretary, been in politics for some years now. Just tell us what brought you into politics? Well, I ended up going in, into politics because of something that happened, something very personal. And I think this is often the case for people who end up in the House of Commons. Um, the, 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 what happened to me was that I grew up in a, a family of, uh, with a, who ran a small business. Um, you know when you type the, uh, your postcode into the internet and it brings up your address? Well, uh, my stepdad wrote that software. My mum ran the business. And in the early 90s, um, in that recession, there was a moment when the business was very small and uh, just starting to grow. And they ha had one main client, and I was a teenager. And the client nearly went bust. And before... Uh, before then, I was ex interested in the technology, I was interested in business, but what, what, what I came to understand was that you know, how can a whole family's livelihood and the people who work for the business all be on the line, you know, the house was on the line, the business was on the line, unless a check came through by that Friday. And it was harrowing as a teenager to watch my parents go through that. Uh, and that made me ask the question, how does the whole system work? You know, not just this business, not just our family, uh, but how does the whole system work? And that led me to um, study economics. Um, and I worked in the business. Then I worked at the Bank of England. And then I was at the Bank of England and, and I got a phone call from a guy I'd met at a party once. Um, and um, he said, why don't you come They're and work? They're all the rage. <laughs> they were all the rage back then. Uh, and uh, he said, why don't you come and work in, in politics? And his name was George Osborne. Oh. And he dragged me into conservative politics. And um, his, his deal was, he said, uh, I can teach you politics if you can teach me economics, when he was shadow chancellor. So I don't know how successful either of us was. Uh, but um, the, uh, I then worked for him and for David Cameron in the great mission to modernise the Conservative Party, make sure that we were electable again, uh, and then get into government in 2010. And this session is about your life and philosophy. When George Osborne comes to you and asks if you want to go into politics, I mean, what is your driving philosophy? What is it that you want to go into politics for? If you were to sum up the, the philosophy, the guiding principles, the ideas that Matt Hancock represents, what are they? Well, there is absolutely no doubt that the purpose of going into politics for almost everybody in Parliament, and definitely for me, is because you have the opportunity to, to make change and to, do, and to make your country a better place. And that is why people go in. In my case, um, I am a liberal conservative, right? I believe that everybody has a contribution to make to society. And I believe that it's society's role and the government's role to help people achieve that. So whether that's through education, you know, my first job was in, uh, was the skills minister uh, in, uh, in education, or through helping people make the most of their lives through growing a business, uh, or right across the board. But it's conservative because it, I essentially think that you should try to do this based on tried and te tested methods, essentially empirically, right? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Burkean, if you like, um, and I, I, I'm pretty skeptical of grand utopias. So I've got, you know, I, and, and I've, I've then been able to apply that way of thinking in, in the different areas that I've, I, I've served. So I'm, a, I'm an unashamed liberal conservative. In fact, you know, liberal conservatism is an area of the political spectrum that is not um, dominated, you know, dominant at the moment. Um, and um, I think that, you know, people need to be out there making the argument for a society that is um, socially liberal and economically liberal, because that's the best way that we help people, uh, we build prosperity, but it's also the best way that everybody can live their lives according to how they want to live their lives. That's really interesting, and you're right, liberal conservatism isn't, uh, isn't where sort of a lot of politics is anymore. Um, you know, the Conservative Party in the last few years has shifted towards sort of more of a, a nationalism. Is that something you're uncomfortable with? Um, it's something that I am, uh, you know, I, I'm happy to be in a coalition with. Um, but, uh, you know, I was in a coalition with the Lib Dems for five years. I, at one point, I was both Vince Cable's number two and Ed Davies' number two. So you know, I was kind of there um, uh, uh, working with the, 
working with the Lib Dems. Uh, I'm, it's, I'm more comfortable with being in coalition with the rest of the Conservative Party, but all parties are, are, are coalitions. I think that we need to be clearer and stronger about making the case for, a, for, a, for an economically and socially liberal conservatism. I think that is actually what, where, that's where, you know, where, that, that is where the country is, is strong, frankly, where we're forward-looking and um, active about embracing modernity um, uh, both on e you know across the board on economic grounds and on uh, on social questions. And if you're part of a coalition and some of the party uh, you know is clearly going into a, a direction that you're not entirely comfortable with, how much do you say that? How much when you're around the cabinet table are you actually making a case for policies that aren't being followed? Well, you know, do you, do you say this to Boris Johnson? Well, I've just said it to you. Um, yeah, of course. I make the um, I, of course I make that I make that argument. That's kind of what I'm, you know. That's 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 what I do. And so around uh, there are these debates around the cabinet table. There's debates in Parliament all of the time, and you know. So uh, there's debate um, on Monday. We're having a debate on the use of um, uh, of GM crops, right? Highly controversial. And there are people on the right and on the left who say, no, no, we can't. We can't use this modern technology, but I think we should feed the world, and I think that we should use modern technology, that or other types of uh, technology in, in agriculture. Now, I'm no great agriculture specialist, but I know where I stand on the principles of uh, both of, of GM crops and, um, uh, and like this cultured meat, you know, the meat that's actually meat that they grow in a lab, a bit like how we grew the vaccines. Very, very exciting, incredible technologies. Um, and um, the key point is to embrace these things because if you want people to be able to make the most out of their lives, the government, the role of the government is to help that to happen and not to get in the way. Well, when it came to um, some of the big challenges that you've sort of faced during your time in, in government, I suppose one of the first was probably Brexit. Yeah. Um, you working with George Osborne came out very much against. You were sort of called part of, you know, Project Fear, effectively. Um, do you feel that whole, what was your thinking around, around that, around that decision? And did you feel the whole campaign didn't quite go to plan? I mean... Well, it definitely <laughs> didn't go to I mean, plan, did it? Do you, I mean, do you, do you um, feel like <laughs> the, the campaign was perhaps, you know, you, you just failed to make the case? I mean, what, what, what went wrong? Yeah, you must think about it a lot now. Um, gosh, uh, it feels like a long time ago now. Um, what I'd say is that um, uh, that campaign did not uh, didn't have enough emotion in it. It didn't capture people's hearts, um, and um, and and that's the primary reason that it lost. And it didn't it didn't have a sort of self confidence. Um, and you know the um, but more than that, I'm a Democrat. In that, once the decision was made, it was like, okay, that decision's made. Let's get on with it. And not everybody felt like that. And obviously, there was then a debate for some time about what to do about the vote. But I was very clear from the day uh, afterwards that um, you've got to, you've got to, you, this is that we live in a democracy and that is more important uh, than the individual decision. You actually ran for the leadership of the Conservative Party, sort of on that basis, talking about what should happen to Brexit next. But during the process of running for, for the leadership, you know, you talk quite specifically about the issue of proroguing yeah. Parliament. Yeah. You know, you said, and, and I quote, um, to prorogue Parliament would be to go against everything that those men who waded onto those beaches fought and died for. I will not have it. You also said a policy on Brexit to prorogue, prorogue Parliament would mean the end of the Conservative Party as a serious party of government. The, the fan club there will applaud everything. <laughs> but um, I think a lot of people at the time were applauding and sort of thought that was a very principled stand. What made you change your mind? <laughs> Well, I thought, and I think a lot of people think this thought as well, and it is possible to have these two thoughts at the same time, I thought that it was also important that given that uh, Boris Johnson was clearly going to be the Prime Minister and became the Prime Minister, that there were the broad spectrum of Conservative voices in his cabinet. That's what I thought. Uh, and he asked me to stay on as Health Secretary, and so I did. And, you know, so, uh, of course... In, you but is that what those men waded onto those beaches for? <laughs> well, 
for, I think for, for Boris Johnson to, to become Prime Minister and you to become Health Secretary? Yeah, I've been asked this lots of times for obvious reasons. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.